Nice eye. Nice eye. There we go. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Dick Beardsley. Welcome to the fishing scene. Hey folks, how's that for uh, starting the show off with a nice walleye? Huh? Boy, I'll tell you. You know what, that's a nice eater size one. I'm gonna put him in the live well. We're gonna keep a few of these tonight and take home to my mother and father-in-law who just love to fish. I should say love to eat fish, but don't ever have the opportunity to fish. Hey folks, we're out in South Dakota walleye fishing on Lake Francis Case. It's early May and Normally this time of the year, it can be awesome for some early season walleye fishing. And for me being of course from the state of Minnesota, I like coming out here because it gives me a chance to kind of warm up and get used to walleye fishing again before the fishing season opens in Minnesota. In South Dakota, the season never does close here. And there's, there's not, I would say, controversy on that. Some states say that you don't need to have a closed season. Some states say, well, you really should. In Minnesota, even if biologically they show that, you know what, you don't need to have a closed season on fish, maybe just have uh, certain restrictions for size, things like that. But you know what, in Minnesota, the fishing opener is such a tradition that I don't think that will ever, ever change. What we're using today, pretty simple, especially in the springtime, and this goes for uh, most lakes, whether you're fishing on like a reservoir like Lake Francis Case or a natural body of water uh, anywhere else, say in Minnesota. Early season fish, jig fishing, it's really tough to beat. Now what we're doing today, I'm actually using a quarter ounce prop jig. And when I say a prop jig, it's got a little spinner blade on there. It's a little Lindy prop, Lindy Little Joe prop jig. And uh, what we're doing is, is using uh, a fathead minnow. What I like to do also on these jigs, I like to open up, no matter what kind of jig I'm using, I like to take a pliers and open up the gap on the hook just a little bit so that that hook, instead of being down, is pointed upwards just a little bit. And the reason I do that is it just gives me a little better opportunity to set the hook and make sure I get a good hook set in there. And uh, what we're doing, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. It doesn't, you don't have to be a brain uh, scientist or a brain surgeon to, to do what we're doing here. We're just getting our minnow and hooking it right through the mouth and out the back of the head, just like that. And then what we're doing, since we're not real deep, we're catching most of our fish out here and anywhere from about 12 feet out to about 16, maybe 17 at tops. So I'm not vertically jigging. Now if I was jigging in water, say uh, 20 feet or deeper, then I'd be vertical jigging more straight down below the boat. But um, I like to do what I call long line in my jigging. I'll, I'll chuck that jig out there and then just really pull it very easily and use the boat. Now right now I'm kind of going back into the wind. When I get up to a certain point, I'll use that wind and drift back and try to hold my boat uh, in about, I'm gonna be out here at about 14, 15 feet of water. And then just pop the jig a little bit and then let it go back. The water temperature is fairly cool right yet, so those fish aren't real aggressive. It's pretty simple and the bite on a lot of times early in the season, you're not gonna get a typical midsummer walleye bite where they just smack that jig. Once in a while you will, but most of the time, what you're gonna feel early on in the season is all of a sudden your jig will just stop, or all of a sudden your jig will just get 
heavy. Or make sure you watch your line because if your line, all of a sudden you, you want to keep your line tight and then if you see that line move to one side or the other, then you want to uh, make sure you set that jig. But like I said, it's pretty simple and you don't need to be a rocket scientist to, uh, to uh, there's one right there. Almost missed him. There we go. <laughs> it feels like an eye. Most of the fish out here are going to be eyes. Once in a while you catch a smallmouth bass or even a white bass. He's hanging down. Oh, there he is. There he's coming. Let me just grab my net here. Nice, nice walleye. Come here, buddy. There we go. Yeah. Oh, boy. I'll tell you, if that doesn't get you in the mood, folks, I don't know what will. Another nice eye here. And uh, let me just get him out of the net. Like I said, I'm going to keep a few of these for my mother and father-in-law who live in Bonesville, South Dakota. Nice fish, about a 17-incher, real nice, healthy-looking fish. And out here, folks, the deal is, is that the limit on walleyes in South Dakota, you can have four. Now, on Lake Francis' case, you can have four walleyes but you can have only one over 18 inches. And I recommend throwing any of them over 18 inches back anyhow, but you can keep one over 18 inches and you can have four others between 15 and eight, or excuse me, three others between 15 inches and 18 inches. Now, that rule goes until the end of June. Once you get to July 1st, still only four walleyes, still only one over 18 inches, but then there's no minimum size limit but I would say you know you, you really any any walleyes that are under 14 inches definitely want to throw them back and let them get a little bit bigger when we come back you'll enjoy more South Dakota walleyes on the fishing our weather conditions out here today we have been having a pretty consistent east to southeast wind blowing not very much but just enough to kind of break up the uh, the sunlight that we're having today and the uh, winds have been about five to maybe up to 10 miles per hour water temperature is at about 50 to 51 maybe 52 degrees air temperature right around 60 or so but let me tell you it feels a lot cooler than that when you're out here on the uh, water with that wind blowing across the surface it really cools things down a lot so you want to make sure if you're heading out here that you uh, dress up warm. The water clarity uh, conditions are not the best. It's a little bit um, murky right now because they've had some, hold on, there we go. Feels like, yeah, he's, boy, I tell you, folks, those walleyes, they just hang right down there. Just drop, yep, nice fish. And they always look a little bit bigger when they're down there in the water. Shaking his head, let me grab that net again. Ooh, jeepers, I thought he was going to shake that hook there for a second. That chartreuse color prop jig seems to be working pretty good. Yeah, nice eye, huh? Hey, these are the perfect eating size. 16, 17 inches, just dandy. Boy, I tell you what, I'm going to be on the good side of Mom and Pond, well, I'll tell you that right now. Well, before I was so rudely interrupted by that walleye, which is okay, I'll be rudely interrupted by a walleye like that anytime. I was talking about water clarity. Out in the area here in South Dakota, near Bonesville, South Dakota, here on Lake Francis Case, they've had, finally got some rain out here. They've had about three inches of rain over the last five days or so. And so from the runoff, the water in this bay we're fishing, and we're actually fishing in uh, called Whetstone Bay. I actually put my boat in here. And so the bay warms up a little quicker than the main part of the lake, so that's why we're finding some fish in here. But also, the water is a little, more dirty than say it probably would be out on the main lake because of the runoff that we've got from the rain over the last few days out here. Cheapers, <laughs> wasn't hardly paying attention and all of a sudden I feel that little weight. Yeah, I tell you what, 
Am I having a ball or am I having a ball? I'm having a ball. There he is. Nah, he's not as big, but a nice eater. Nice eater. Those are this is that's about a 16-inch fish right here, maybe 15 and a half, 16 inches. Just a, a wonderful eater. Hey, you know what folks? And the the bite, they're really, they're really hitting light. You know, like I tell people when I'm out on guide trips, if you feel anything different than when you first when you first pop that jig down there, make sure that you set the hook. It doesn't matter if you set it and there's nothing there, or you set it and there's a rock there, or a piece of wood, or a weed. A lot of times, it's just the subtlest bite. You'll get more subtle bites out walleye fishing than you will those rock 'em sock 'em days that come along every once in a while where those walleyes are about knocking that, you know, pulling that rod right out of your hand. So you feel anything different, man, set that hook, tighten your line, set the hook. Bonesville, South Dakota, neat little town, 257 is the, the population. My father-in-law, Ed, used to be the mayor of Bonesville. My wife, Mary, is from there. It's a small town, a lot of nice people. It's about 150 miles southwest of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. If you're coming, say, like from Detroit Lakes, it's 425 miles right smack dab on the nose from Detroit Lakes to Bonesville. Say from Fargo, you're looking at about uh, 375 miles or so to uh, Bonesville, South Dakota. Then you go about 10 miles straight north and you get to where we're at right now on Whetstone Bay. And they got a very good boat ramp. Actually, you can even do some camping there. They've got a fish cleaning facility. So you've got all the uh, accolades to really start your fishing off very, very well and get out there. And especially if you're out here early in the season, a lot of days you never have to leave Whetstone Bay. Work the points like we are today and uh, just start working different depths and, until you find where those walleyes, there we go. <laughs> Feels like a walleye hanging down there. Come on, buddy. Ooh, now it, I don't think it is. Oh, it looked like a bass, maybe. I can't, there he is, it is. There he is, hey, smallmouth bass. I think I'll just wing him up here. I can get him in the boat, there we go. Hey, there a little smallmouth bass. And folks, I'll tell you, that's an added bonus here out on a lot of these reservoirs, like Lake Francis Case, is that uh, that's a little one, and we'll get him back in the water. You can get some nice smallmouth bass fishing out here also. Don't go away. More from Lake Francis Case coming up in just a bit. on he's thumping he's thumping like an eye right straight down there he is I see him oh yeah nice eye nice eye let me grab the net on him oh yeah man I'm telling you folks this walleye fishing is so much fun If you live in an area where you've got lots of trees, this is going to be a completely different environment for you. But let me tell you folks, for me at least personally, it's one of the most beautiful places that I've ever had the opportunity to fish in. You've got lots of open spaces out here, and you've got some little tufts of these kind of scrub spruce trees, I guess what they... Oh, I thought I had one going there. What they call them. Now you also see, on the shoreline, you'll see a lot of dead trees up on shore. Well, at one point, even like last year, the water level was way higher. It's down about 15 feet. The biggest reason for that is because of the lack of snowfall across the whole northern plains this past winter, that the water levels are quite a bit down. But hey, that doesn't matter this year, at least right now, because the boat ramps are still great. They've, uh, they've, you know, they've got plenty of water to launch your boat in. And actually, sometimes it can actually concentrate the walleyes like this one. Come on, baby. Another nice fish. Another nice fish. Come here. Come to Papa. Where are you, buddy? I don't see him. There he is. 
Oh yeah. Thanks, Walleye. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come here. There we go. Yeah. Oh boy. I tell you, folks, you want to get out to South Dakota if you want to have some early season walleye fishing. It's pretty awesome. Let me tell you, boy, that one bent the hook a little bit. Nice fish, huh? Nice fish. Notice how they, they have, they're more of a whiter colored fish than they are back in northern Minnesota types of water. The reason that is, is that the, there's a lot of gray shale rock that's uh, around the area here and of course in the water. And because of that, those walleyes take on more of a whiter type of color look uh, to, uh, to their flesh. Again, I'm using a prop jig. Now, I like to use a long rod when I'm fishing. I've got a seven foot two inch medium light action rod. It's got a very fast tip, a good backbone here. And I'm using a deadbolt 30 and I've got it, I've got it uh, spooled up with six pound monofilament line. And then I just tie it direct. You always want to tie your jig right to uh, the line, right to the jig. Do not put on leaders. On some lakes, especially around uh, northern Minnesota, you're going to get bit off quite a bit from northern pike. But the the jig works way better than if you uh, if you tie on you know some type of heavy apparatus like a leader. Now I've also got another type of jig that you can use, and it also can work very effective. The reason I'm not using a jig like this, so this is a Lindy Fuzzy Grub and it's a chartreuse color. The reason I'm using bright colors today is because we've had we've got sunshine, but the reason I'm using the prop jig today is because this bay that we're fishing in, the water's a little bit murky, and that vibration that that propeller gives off sometimes is all it takes is to get that fish, they'll, they'll hear and feel that vibration down in the water, and then that'll make them come over towards that bait. Once they hone in on that bait, and then it's all over. We'll get baited back up here, and. But uh, if you're looking for some early season walleye fishing, you, you, you need to visit one of the reservoirs in South Dakota. They've got four of them, Lake Francis Case being the third one, and the dam, the Garrison Dam, or it's not the Garrison Dam, the Pickstown uh, Dam, uh, the Fort Randall Dam, I guess is exactly what it's called, is in Pickstown, South Dakota. And uh, Bone Hill is 25 miles from there, and, but it's a, it's a huge reservoir, a lot of opportunities. You know, and if you've never been on the reservoir before, don't worry about that, especially in the early months, like May and June. If you just get out there on the, in some of the bays and the main bodies of water and, and find a point, a, a point that tapers down into the water, start working depth starting at about 12 feet out to maybe 30 feet. You work it with a jig, you can work it with a bottom bobster, which I'm not using today, but there we go. Another fish. Oh, that one feels like a little better fish. Yeah, that one feels like a little better fish. Oh yeah, he's hanging down there good. Come on, baby. Oh, he's just a thumping. Just a thumping. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a nice eye. There's a nice eye. Let me grab the net here. Nice eye, come here, buddy. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's a, that's a nicer fish. That one, yeah, that's... That one's about a 21 incher there, folks. Uh, yep, that one's that one's going back. You can have one over 18, but we're gonna put this this gal back in there. Yeah, nice fish, huh? We'll get her back in there. When you're fishing, folks, make sure that when you set your drag, if you got an air on one side or the other, always have it a hair loose than too tight. You get it too tight and you get a bigger fish up near the boat and it takes off, boom, that's when the line is going to snap on you. Oh! Oh, yeah! Oh, this is a nice fish. This one is hanging down there, folks. Yeah, this is a dandy. This is a dandy. This is a nice eye. Yeah, I know it's an eye, the way it's just hanging. Feels almost like a log on there pulling down there. Oh yeah, there it comes. Nice eye. Nice eye. Oh boy. That's a nice eye. Come here, baby. You're going back home. There we go. Oh man. Hey, 
folks. South Dakota walleye fishing on Lake Francis Case. I'll tell you, it doesn't get a whole lot better than this. Come here, baby. We're going to get you back in the water as soon as I can get that jig out of your mouth. Look at that, folks. Nice fish, huh? Wow. Get her back in here. Thank you, honey. There you go. All right. No harm done. Hey, folks, that wraps it up today. Remember to practice selective harvesting. By doing so, we'll continue to have great fishing for years to come. I'm Dick Gersley. Thanks for joining me today on the fishing scene. I'll see you real soon out there on the water.